This presentation will discuss Silical Boost and the stages of fracture healing. It will show you how the ingredients in Silical Boost are involved in each stage of fracture healing. Calcium and vitamin D are only the last stages of fracture healing. This also applies to other orthopedic procedures like spine fusions and osteotomies. As an orthopedic surgeon, I've always been interested in bone healing. Part of that is because failure to heal or delayed unions is a big problem after fractures or after spine fusions or other orthopedic procedures. And in the course of my practice, patients would also ask me, is there anything I can take to help my bones heal faster? The usual response from orthopedic surgeons is just take a multivitamin and eat healthy foods. But now there is something. Silical Boost is designed to help bone production during the healing phase. It's taken for a few months in addition to Silical System when recovering from a fracture or broken bone or if a short-term boost is needed to begin a bone health supplement program and this supports natural bone formation and strengthening. It needs to be taken with the Silical System because the Silical System has nutrients that are also important for bone formation. Now let's get back to our story. One of the reasons that orthopedic surgeons say you don't need to take anything goes back to 1986 when a paper appeared that said it does not appear that supplementation of dietary protein or mineral in excess of calculated requirements will alter the process of healing. But this paper said in excess of calculated requirements and it compared animal studies where the animals had adequate calcium and vitamin D. But since that time, there are numerous experimental studies and human studies that show that insufficient vitamin D leads to poor callus strength and that vitamin D supplementation improves fracture healing in elderly patients. This is important because a third of the population in the United States is deficient in vitamin D. So vitamin D supplementation alone makes sense. One of the things in that paper that caught my eye in rereading it is that calcium and amino acids are mobilized from other body stores in response to skeletal injury. In fact, bone loss is five times more rapid in the opposite hip during the year following a hip fracture. And the rate of total bone loss doubles following a vertebral compression fracture. A broken bone from any cause between the ages of 20 and 50 increases the risk of fractures after the age of 50 by 74%. So a fracture does take bone and minerals from other bones, and it's very important that someone who's had a fracture begin a bone health program in great vigor. Now bone healing is different process than bone maintenance. When you break a bone, there's an initial inflammatory phase that lasts anywhere from five to 10 days. And this helps mobilize some of the bone morphogenetic proteins that stimulate the repair process. The repair process consists of mobilizing collagen and organizing it and forming the protein structure that becomes the soft callus. Then the remodeling phase begins with calcification of that callus and mineralization. After the bones mature, then there's the maintenance phase, which is similar to the needs of someone who's already got fully formed bone. As we said, the inflammatory phase lasts a few days in the healthy patient but a prolonged inflammation interferes with fracture healing. An infection is an example of something that causes a prolonged inflammation. Interestingly, there is no oxidative stress during the first three days of fracture healing, and that's a normal process. But when there's reperfusion as the little vessels grow back into the fracture area, in the ischemic fracture site, that's associated with free radical formation and treatment with vitamin C and vitamin E improves the markers of bone formation and improves fracture healing. There are several studies that show that fracture healing is improved with vitamin E. Here's a study that appeared in the Journal of Orthopedic Traumatology, a respected journal, that concluded the results of this study show that alpha tocopherol has beneficial effects on new bone formation during distraction osteogenesis. And distraction osteogenesis is a controlled environment where the bone is broken and gradually stretched to produce new bone, as in limb lengthening. So the inflammatory phase benefits from vitamin C and vitamin E. And what about the reparative phase? 
Well, in this phase, as we said, collagen, amino acids, lysine, proline, L-arginine, which is a nitric oxide uh, donor, helps the blood vessel formation that's associated with the repair process. Vitamin C improves fracture healing in animal and human studies. And this may be because it helps suppress the inflammatory phase, but it also helps with the repair phase because it helps build the collagen that's needed for bone. We all know that scurvy is a disorder of connective tissue caused by vitamin C deficiency. And hydroxyproline is a major component of collagen. Vitamin C converts proline to hydroxyproline, and you can't have collagen without vitamin C. Here's a study that many orthopedic surgeons haven't read. It's called The Effect of Vitamin C on Fracture Healing in Elderly Osteogenic Disorder Shinogi Rats. It's not surprising that the doctor wouldn't want to read that right off the bat. But why they pick those rats is that other types of rats can produce vitamin C, but Shinogi rats need dietary vitamin C like humans. And what they found is the supply of dosages higher than normal during healing enhances the mechanical resistance of the callus. There's another study that's similar in ACTA orthopedic and trauma surgery that says it was seen that vitamin C supplemented group went through the stages of fracture healing faster compared with the control group. So supplementation with vitamin C improves callus formation and accelerates the healing process. A problem with patients is that vitamin C is very low in the normal dietary intake in the United States. For basic functioning, the recommended daily amount by the NIH is 85 milligrams per day. And the median intake in the United States is 60 milligrams per day. This means that more than half the people in the United States consume less than 60 milligrams per day. So not only do they need supplementation just to bring them up to normal, the added supplementation actually accelerates fracture healing and it's proportional to some extent to the amount of supplementation that's given. There are other dietary supplements that influence bone formation, and there are numerous papers that support this. Inositol, arginine, silicon, vitamin B6, and selenium all have positive influences on bone formation, and these are included in Silical Boost. How does silicon work? It influences collagen production by increasing the amount of collagen. It strengthens the collagen with better collagen cross-linking, and it helps attract the calcium to the collagen for the early stages of, of mineralization of the callus. Now we get on to the calcium and vitamin D, which is important, but that's in the last stages of fracture healing when you're actually mineralizing the callus. So we don't want to underestimate the importance of calcium and vitamin D, but we've also overlooked the importance of the earlier nutrients during the inflammatory and repair phases of fracture healing. So we should probably tell our patients, I'd suggest you take Silical System Plus Boost starting four to seven days after surgery to help your bones heal. And someday, nutritional supplements may be used as commonly as prophylactic antibiotics to improve the outcomes of fracture care and surgery. Thank you.